And then you get into silly arguments when you're married. Silly. We were, we were um, three months before we had our really first big blowout fight. This was our first big, it was over a roaster chicken. Tiny little, greasy little bird about that big. I'd gone to take a nap. I didn't know any better. I really didn't. I learned early on, naps were a huge mistake in my home. God forbid I'm rested, really. It's so much harder to manipulate a well-rested, rational thinking human. People are so much more compliant when their eyeballs are burning out of their skull, you know. I have no idea. I, I don't know if it was her upbringing or not, but people, when she was awake, you're awake. I mean, it's... So... Now, I don't, feel, I don't know if I was asleep five minutes or five hours. I'm waking up to the sound of a vacuum cleaner in the bedroom. I'm sleeping and my wife is choosing to vacuum the bedroom. <laughs> Apparently, that wasn't waking me up fast enough. She started to go under the bed. We had a water bed. There was no under the bed. <laughs> Again, I'm stirring, but not quite awake. She went after something on the pillow. I have no idea, but I can tell you what she got caught. My hair in the attachment. <laughs> now I'm awake. Whoa. To this day, that was 28 years ago. To this day, her reaction still surprises me. Oh, you're awake. <laughs> Good, the chicken's done. You'll have to back up. I think I missed something. She said, no, you said if I cooked the chicken, you'd carve it for me. Then I said the dumbest thing a married man can say to his wife. I looked her right in the eye and said, I never said that. <laughs> oh. If you're a newlywed in this room, take my word for it. If your wife said you said it, you said it. Don't even go down that road. There's, I'm telling you, their, their, their ability to recall every last piece of verbiage that ever entered, ex exited out of your lips is amazing. And it, there's no end to it. It just goes on and on. Uh, that's not what I said. That's exactly what you said. That's not what I said. That's exactly what you, that's not what I said. What I said was I'm going to take a nap. If I'm awake when your chicken's done, I'll carve it for you. I didn't tell you to come in here and suck my brain out of my skull with the vacuum attachment, drag me out of bed. I didn't tell you to come wake me up. I'll pause here while you all choose a team in this discussion. I'll tell you how dumb I was. I thought that was the end of that discussion. I made my point, I rolled over, I turned my back on my wife, whoa. She gets on the bed with both knees, get up. You said you'd carve the chicken, get out there and carve the chicken. Every man here knows there comes a point in every one of these discussions you have to change tact. Obviously what you've been saying is not registering, so you just come up with another way to say it. I don't know how to carve a chicken. I never carved a chicken my entire life. Why don't you carve it? You could mutilate the bird just as easily as I could. She says, I don't know how to carve a chicken either. Now, you said you'd carve the chicken, you'd have to carve the chicken. You're not going back to see if you carve the chicken. You know what I said? I don't even know what this is about. Lord, help me. <laughs> I just want to sleep. I got this. All right, all right, I'll carve the stupid chicken. Now, I'm walking to the kitchen to carve the bird. I'm not even married three months. I'm a mumbling idiot. I don't even like chicken. You want chicken, you want chicken, fried chicken, for God's sakes. They'll carve it up for you. What'd you say? I didn't say nothing to you. Now I'm in the kitchen, I'm in my underwear, I got stuff in my eyes, I'm not in a good mood, got a knife, I got a fork, got a greasy bird. In comes my wife, who not two minutes ago just told me she didn't know how to carve a chicken. Well, apparently there was a chicken carving class somewhere between our bedroom and the kitchen. Oh my gosh. Every man here knows what happened next. Two small hands appear out of nowhere. You're doing it all wrong. Let me show you how to do it. You got it over here. I stabbed the bird. Now I'm waving at her with my fork. She grabs my wrist. Give me the bird. Oh no, you're not getting this bird. Give me the bird. Now we're standing in the kitchen, wrestling over this stupid. Give me the bird. No, you give me that bird. I'm not just... And at one point she goes, go back to sleep. Oh, I'll sleep like a baby till you run a jackhammer. Give me that bird. And I yank on it and the bird flies up in the air. And it was like in a movie, it was like a one and a half, I'm watching it, he goes one, one, lands right on her head, boink. Both of us look down on the ground, and we look at each other, grease is running down her face. She says, I can't believe you threw it at me. I didn't throw it at you, yes you did. 
28 years ago, to this day, we'll be at parties. I got a fundraiser where we don't know anybody, and I can always tell when she's telling her version of that story. Because at one point, six women in a circle will all turn around and glare at me. In her version, I whipped it at her skull at 100 miles an hour. A bone could have broke off and went through her temple and killed her on the spot. And I would have never met my grandbabies. 